day one of the Republican National Convention here in Cleveland, in fact, right behind me here, we've been talking about the similarities, in fact, what looks to be the plagiarism in Melania Trump's speech tonight with the speech that Michelle Obama gave at the 2008 Democratic Convention. Let's watch for yourself. And Barack and I were raised with so many of the same values. Like, you work hard for what you want in life. From a young age, my parents impressed on me the values that you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're going to do. That you treat people with dignity and respect. That your word is your bond and you do what you say and keep your promise that you treat people with respect. Because we want our children and all children in this nation to know that the only limit to the height of your achievements is the reach of your dreams and your willingness to work hard for them. Because we want our children in this nation to know that the only limit to your achievements is the strength of your dreams and your willingness to work for them. Well, I'm joined right now by Michael Caputo, who's a former Trump communications advisor, perfect guest for this occasion, and also former United States Senator George Lemieux, who is a delegate from Florida tonight in front of this convention. Mr. Delegate, but Senator's a lot better. What would you do if a staff member uh, uh, plagiarized a speech for you? Well, I let me not take the bait on that first. Well, I know that bait, these, but no, it's these, true. Are, these are two similar speeches, but the no, things they're verbatim. Th there's they're close. But no, the things no, that she said no, and verbatim. Michelle Obama said no, are the same verbatim. things that parents say to their kids no, no, every they, day. They, no, these words and track verbatim. Let I, me I help you out. Them. Values that you work hard for and what you want in life, that your word is your bond, that you work hard for in life, that your word is your bond, and what you do what you say you're going to do, that you treat people with respect. These are exact words over and over again, taken one from the other. This is a, this is, this and, is. And I just look back at Laura Bush's 2004 speech when she was on the stage for, uh, yeah. and, and we're, she we're, talks about if you're determined and you want to work no, no, hard, these words are the you same. can do anything you want to do, and that's the beautiful no, thing no. about America. The plagiarism is copying the words, right. not the thought. Right. These are words. I don't know if this is a Joe Biden level uh, plagiarism. Do you want to read it? I've you seen it. Help? Read I've it. Seen They're verbatim. They're close. They're close. They're not close, sir. They're unbelievable. The, these are the things that All, let me continue because we day. want our children in this nation. We want our children in this nation. Just a minute. To know that the only limit. To know that the only limit. This is word after word after word. I'm sorry. Nice try, Senator. It is verb this is plagiarism. Your, your thoughts, Michael. I, I would have been fired for this. There's no question about that. I mean, as a speechwriter, you were a speechwriter. Right. Um, back in the day when you were writing speeches, when I was writing speeches, uh, it, it was anathema to even admit that the, the boss had a speechwriter. He wrote every yeah, speech. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit here and say that Melania was... Let's talk about Trump. How does he uh, administer, uh, 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 enforce accountability, to use an old word we're, we're using a lot these days. Accountability. If someone messes up, you, you deal with the situation. Right, well, that's will he deal with this yeah. or will he say... Uh, I'm not touching it. It's the damn press. Well, I'll, press. I'll tell you what. You, you, had it, you had it right on the head before. When the person who wrote this speech, whoever that person is. They should is, take the initiative. They should take the initiative you right did. now. I mean, re resign me off your resignation immediately. If Mr. Trump wants to take your resignation, he takes it. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But when you put the, the, the spouse of the, of the candidate uh, in harm's way like this, uh, there are consequences. And, and I, I think. I, I'm sorry. I, I think the challenge that. Putting all this aside, the challenge that the Trump campaign has is they had a good night at the first convention. Until well, now. Well, what's going to happen tomorrow is that this is going to be the story. Yeah, and what would you do? Well, I think... I mean, tomorrow night we have another Cabell creative speeches and, speeches, and you'll probably like it to be a fresh night where the focus is on what happens tomorrow night. But as you just said, it would continue this conversation through tomorrow. Right. You got to change the topic. If you have bad news, yeah. you got to get past it. So you got to find out what happened. If you're running the camp, I've been a campaign manager, I've been a candidate, I've been in office. You got to find out what happened. Was this a mistake? Is it just a similarity? Is there someone who lifted this? Yeah. How involved was she in it? And you got to tell the story. You know, it's interesting. And, and you know, I, I'm not a sadist, so I'm not going to enjoy this. But I was thinking tonight the work that went into this production I thought it was perhaps overdone. Somebody said it was like David Copperfield. I think it was Rachel Maddow that said that. But out comes Trump in profile. That amazing scene 
like a Batman kind of scene. He comes, World wrestling. Yeah, you know, and he comes of out in the middle, yeah. and then you see him coming through the cloud with a strong walk, and he walks forward, and it's Donald Trump. And then we are the champions. A great racing song is playing, and he, there it is. This is this is this is how they introduced the speech. It was plagiarized. This the effort that went into the production values here. Thinking about it, look at how the prompters come up, and all this drama, all this thought, and choreography, and production going into a speech which somebody knew as this was happening was plagiarized because they plagiarized it. They took it from Michelle Obama, who apparently had the same speechwriter as Hillary Clinton, Sarah Horowitz. So they took it from the enemy camp and put it in the, in the, in the teleprompter for Melania Trump to read. I enjoyed that. She did, she did an excellent job. I, th and I, I, thought, I, I was really moved oh, by Very appealing the, the, to the American the, people. It was a great introduction. The presentation was charming and right. perfect. And, and it, with all the accent, people were with her every moment. They really wanted that to work. Yeah, they I think people wanted to root for her. They wanted her to do well, and she did do well. And now? And now we're Somewhere, talking about this. Somebody's tossing I, I and think, turning. I, I think this too shall pass. I think it'll pass quickly. When, when the staffer falls on his sword yeah. and, or her sword, when that happens. And also, by the way, we had a great speech by Rudy Giuliani tonight. And Wasn't that a great speech? I thought it, it was fantastic. fantastic. It had an urban edge to it. Is and what he I liked. left every ounce of his was, energy on that stage. I, like I saw we were, him afterward. I thought he was good. He looked exhausted. I thought we were watching Clarence Darrow give his last closing yeah. argument. <laughs> I think that was really a speech awesome. of a lifetime. Yeah, and yeah. the great thing about Rudy's speech is it had to do with defending New York, defending our city with all his credibility. It wasn't so much let's start three more wars or anything like that. It was right. much more of a defense, a tough defense. Yeah, you know, very passionate. The tough, I'm defending my neighborhood. Right. He's got that sort of urban ethnic thing going. Here he is. Those that are unjustified must be punished. Those that are justified, we must apologize to. He's talking about the police. It's time to make America safe again. It's time to make America one again. One America! <laughs> he, I think a lot of this was he caught up. He got caught up in it. It wasn't in the text. He did. The text was thin. He did. Like I said, I saw him walking out. He looked like he had just gone, you know, gone 10 rounds. He was yeah. really. I thought they used him. Well. I thought it was odd that they brought him on with a, sort of what we used to call the keynoter. You guys sure. all remember that sure. term, which is the first speech, usually the first or second night, that just grabs the delegates. And they just go, "Yeah, that's why we're here," you know. And it had that bracing quality. But then to bring on the, you know, the more aesthetic, you know, a pr pr a production of, uh, unfortunately, aesthetic but problematic now performance of Melania. I thought it was strange to set that up that way. Let me ask you about the earlier part of the night. Uh, apart from that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the evening at the theater? <laughs> Senator, what do you think tonight accomplished in terms of, if this doesn't dominate, what was positively accomplished by the Republican Party tonight? I thought it was about safety and security, and they were basically putting on their witnesses and trying their case about how Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton have not kept us safe, and Rudy was really the, the close. He was there to make the final point, and I thought with lots of different testimony. Even though 9-11 occurred under Republican watch, I mean, it's all well, but still, but after, an after interesting idea. I think the comparison is that after 9-11, President Bush, we I did see. not have a domestic terrorist event in this yeah. country. Now we've had several. People don't feel secure. Yeah. They wanted to make that case today. I think they were very effective. And I think Sheriff Clark did a good job, a great job. Really? He really oh, I, I think so. I mean, he looked, let me tell you something. For a, a sheriff to stand up in front of a crowd like that on national te television takes a lot of guts. I thought he did a good job. What's really the, the guy going. that got to me was Marcus Luttrell. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. He, first of all, look what he's been I saw the movie, you know, amazing. Lone Survivor. And an amazing story of a guy he left behind out there in Afghanistan. And, and we had a stage full of them afterwards. Yeah. There were all kinds of war heroes up there. David Bellavia, whose, whose New York Times bestselling book is going to be a new movie next year, going to be the new American. So what's Sniper. the Republican message on war? Is it... We've made mistakes in war, or is it we are a warrior nation, or is it we're aggressive? I couldn't quite distinguish. Uh, I couldn't distill out the Trump message, which was Iraq was a mistake, trying to topple Qaddafi was a mistake, with the more martial approach of, the, of this uh, convention tonight. I didn't think it was dovish at all. So what is the Republican position? I think the Republican war? position is... It's more about safety and security than a focus on war, is that we need to be aggressive Domestic. and we need to go after these people and we need to take the war to them and be really? off it. Yeah, I do. But what did he mean when he said we shouldn't have gone to Iraq? We took the war to them. Right. Well, that was the mentality of that war, even if it wasn't right. true, because Iraq did not attack us on 9-11.
But people behind the war thought we were taking we, the war. You know, that's right. what the intelligence, the wrong intelligence, but the intelligence was Not the time. intelligence that came to the president, vice president, because there was never anything in the intelligence right. about nuclear weapons. I think the message wasn't about Iraq. I think the message was about a strong military and respecting veterans. In fact, well, the, the, the last uh, group up there was talking about how we need I to treat our, bet our veterans a smart, better. A smart call there. And my former Senator George Lemieux, thank you for coming on. My pleasure. We didn't know what the topic would be, but you're stuck with it. Anyway, <laughs> Michael Caputo, who knows all about these situations.